Well, this looks like a interesting little thing. It's a power supply off a Lenovo laptop, and um, comes with this lead uh, that sort of looks like a, a USB connector um, that goes into the power supply, and now like a kind of like a, a USB a connector with a sticky out bit as goes into the laptop. Uh, which is not a USB connector actually, if you look inside the six uh, six connections in there, yeah? And the uh, problem is that it's it's very intermittent, so, so the laptop won't charge. Laptop's not charging. And uh, the power supply uh, on it, it says... Um, output 20 volts at 2 amps or 5.2 at 2 amps. Um, so I'm, I'm not that familiar with these, but um, it's, I'm guessing that via this six-way cable, when the laptop goes into standby, it tells the power supply it's in standby, so it drops the voltage from like 20 to 5.2 to save some energy. Uh, anyway, it's not working. I mean, apparently, if you do waggle the cable here, you can get it to charge, uh, but I tried it myself, I couldn't get it to do it. Uh, well, I think that's what the customer says. Uh, you can get these off eBay, like new ones for about £20 UK. Not expensive. Um, the problem is on this island is like if you order something off uh, eBay, um, quite often you'll find as the seller just cancels your order because it says uh, they won't deliver to the Canary Islands. Uh, and sometimes stuff will turn up eventually. Um, but we could do with getting this working for now while we get a replacement. So, uh, customer asked me if I could fix it if it's not too expensive to fix it, and you know, get them up and running uh, while eventually they can, uh, you know, get, get themselves a replacement one. Uh, so, I've tried to get into this thing, and it's, it's sealed. I mean, quite often with power supplies, I can get in them uh, by effectively cracking them open. Well, this seems really tough. Uh, so. We need to get inside here. I'm thinking if we can get in here, because uh, I haven't got like a connector for this, but I can effectively uh, cut cut the end off this, yeah, that, that goes into here. Cut the end off and solder the wires to the, the correct place on the board. So the wire, if I put like a hole here, the wire will actually come through here. Yeah? Bit of arrow that to hold this in place. So that's what I'm going to try and do with it. Um, so how do we get inside it? Well, this is going to be fun. We're going to use. Uh, we're going to use one of these, the Dremel. Um, dead handy tool, this. Um, it's one of them things, you know, I've had this maybe for about, I don't know, 15 years now. Uh, before I had one, I didn't realise I needed one. <laughs> Once I've got one, I wondered how the hell I ever managed without one. Uh, I haven't got any of the black uh, cutting wheels left here. Um, I've got some thin and thicker ones of these, like brownie ones. I'm going to see if this will actually effectively try and cut along the edge here, yeah? And try and take the bottom of this off with the power supply attached, hopefully without uh, damaging it. And uh, yeah, let's have a look, see if we can get in there. Just give me a moment, I'll just plug the, uh, I'll plug the Dremel in. Let's, let's see what we can do. <coughs> I had a slight uh, change of heart then, decided to use one of the, the thin uh, cutting discs instead. Let's see if this will do it. So, yeah, if we can get in here and we can fix it, I'm sure we can use uh, epoxy resin and, and seal this thing back up again. So, uh, this is where the fun starts. Let's see if we can get into it. It's actually melting as much as cutting it, I'll just slow it down a little bit. It seems to work better on the higher speed. Let it melt its way in. Mm. 
<laughs> it's full into it there. Okay. Plastic seems fairly thick actually on this. I'm not wanting to cut all the way into it, I just want to make like a big groove in it. So I'm hoping now that if I take a screwdriver, I might be able to just split this open, yeah? Not quite, but it's, it's coming. coming mm -hmm. more to eat now. Aha! 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 We're in. It looks like this was just glued basically. It seems like it was literally just glued together. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We can get that off of here. Okay. So. We can see the PSU inside here, yeah? Uh, I'll just get uh, a bit of cloth and just uh, clean up the desk a little bit. Okay, so uh, that's cleaned the desk up a bit. Now, can we get this out? Can we get this PCB out of here? Will it just slide out? That's a good question. There's only one way to find out, eh? Let's get some uh, suitable uh, weapon, little crowbar. It seems to be loose. Yeah, that's pushed inwards. It's moving. It's coming. The whole thing's pushing inwards from here. There we go. So there's our power supply. Um, Let's get in at it. Let's take this uh, metal uh, shielding off it and then uh, let's see if we can find out effectively which pin of the wire goes where, yeah? Um, and let's see if we can just effectively lash this together, hard wire the cable into it, as I said. Okay, so how do we get this apart? Looks like it's just held together these little uh, tabs, a little bit of tape. Yeah, the little tabs must just bend out. Yep, off she comes. That's a compact little thing, isn't it? It's a compact little thing. Let's get this off. Seems to be held on by a screw. Yeah. Is it a screw? No, it's uh there's a wire here which is soldered to this. I'm guessing that's kinda of like from the ground. That's strange though, because there is no ground, it's only two pin, so there is no ground. It's certainly soldered, so uh, yeah, we have to uh, unsolder that by the looks of it. Okay. So let the soldering iron warm up for a moment, bit of flux. Bit of leaded solder. A little uh, blade type soldering tool, that'll do. Okay, we're up to temperature, so let's see. If 
if we can unsolder this. Looks like we can. I'm not sure exactly what this is doing actually. Uh, let's try a bit of a braid on that. Hey, let's try a bit of a desolder braid, see if we can actually uh, get that off. Okay, solder braid, bit of flux I mentioned before. Bit of flux on the braid. Let's see if we can uh, remove that. Probably help with a bit of uh, leaded solder on the end of the iron. There we go. Let's see if we can do this. Yeah, so that just seems to uh, go through a, a hole, basically. Is it just bent? Uh, let's zoom in a bit. Let's see if we can sort this out. Yeah, so you can you can see um, it's like a a wire just coming through a hole in this metal uh, thing, which needs to come off, so I can get to the uh, the connections on here. Yeah. Uh, I think I've just uh, just managed to leave it up a little bit. Let's get a bit of heat on and see if I can actually get uh, get this under the edge of it. Yeah, and push it upwards. Yeah, oh, it's broke off. <laughs> it broke off. And there's a bit. There's a bit of it left, so I can probably solder the thing back into place afterwards. Let's get some heat in the air. There we go. Okay, so off it comes. Yeah, there's like yeah, there's a little metal pin in there. Let's get this off it. Again, it's just being held like this, this little pin. So there we are. That's our uh, power spice. Just get a bit of focus on that. It's obviously not quite in focus. Is that good? Yeah, that's good. So, what do we have? Well, I'm guessing somewhere we got pa well, powers coming in. Uh, looks like a capacitor here. This is the big main smoothing capacitor. So I'm guessing there's a bridge rectifier somewhere. Yeah, here we are. You can see four pins in the line here, yeah? So this is the bridge rectifier. Uh, one, two, three, four. Um, this is the main smoothing capacitor. Um, it's hard to see the high voltage and low voltage side here. Uh, I'm guessing this is the high voltage side. Yeah, these look like a couple of opto isolators here, yeah? across the big divide if you like the gap between the high and low voltage side but yeah the gap kind of runs uh, so this like big gap on the circuit board here and across here yeah this will be the high voltage or hot side and this will be the low voltage or cold side yeah that's how it looks no the other way around hot side cold side so the, the so these then are your uh, diodes I'm saying that with the uh, that would um well, one diode there probably another diode here that would rectify the ac this is, this is your transformer yeah but no tell why this is on the input side so this this looks like this would be the mosfet that's driving the transformer yeah and the controller is going to be um this chip here it's a controller chip for your pulse width modulation Oh, I see. That seems to be on the on the low voltage side. There's another chip down here. Oh yeah, there's another chip down here on the high voltage side. I'm guessing. Uh, it's so compact, it's hard to really kind of work this out as to which side's which of it. To be honest, uh, but we're not. I'm not too bothered. Obviously, this is low voltage because this is your output. Yeah, low voltage side, high voltage side. 
so no, I don't see a driver. It's possible. Um, yeah, wherever it is, it's buried, buried in here somewhere. Okay. Let's not bother any more about how the thing's put together. Let's see if it's actually working. So what I'm looking for now is to see uh, on this connector here. This is the output. Yeah. Um, I want to see how many uh, connections I have. It looks like I have six. I think I can see one, two, three, four down here. Yeah, one, two, three, four. And then this outer shielding. Oh, well, I see. Ah, oh. now I'm starting to see this somehow. Yeah, you know, so there's there's six pins in this. Yeah, there's six pins in it. It looks like the middle two are just connected together. Yeah, probably so that effectively it's telling the laptop. You know, it connect it connects two of the wires together in here. Yeah, so that must be telling the laptop that it's connected or telling the power supply. I'm guessing that's that when this is in here, these shorts these two together, so the laptop knows it's connected to the power supply. So it looks like the middle two of those. That looks like the other four, the actual voltages. Um. I think the easiest way to work out what goes here on here would be to cut off this end of the cable somewhere here, yeah? Strip it back and then I can plug it into here and I can test from each cord wire and see where it goes, yeah? So cut it off, plug it in here and then from each cord wire I know where it is and I can strip the other end and I know where to solder each cord wire. So let's do it that way. Let's just zoom out a little bit so you can see a bit better what I'm doing. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, I say, is just just uh, this is the end that goes into here. This is the funny end that goes into the laptop. So we we need that end, yeah. So let's cut this off here somewhere. Yeah. Let's have a look to see how many wires there are in this cable and where they actually go. Uh, where's my Stanley knife? So, we actually only have three wires. That's a bit surprising. I thought there'd be more than that. We actually only have three wires. Yeah, definitely only three wires. Okay. Where's my uh, cutters? So, we only have three wires. Oh, and this one's ah, is it shielded? No, no, it's just a wire. Just a wire. Thought it was a shielded wire for me that made four, but no, there's just three, yeah. Uh, so this can go in here, and now it's a matter of me figuring out where each of those wires goes, yeah. And then I might I might actually desolder this and just solder the wires in its place, so take this connector off. Want to know what goes where? You can tell straight away that oh, that's that's gone. Yeah, it's, it's flapping around, isn't it? It's flapping around. So that's what the problem obviously was, and I don't think there's any chance to fix that with this weird connector. Okay, that kind of confirms what the customer was saying. So, where do these wires go to? Well, start with the black one, eh? Black. Yeah, where I thought it was. So here you can see there's like the ground, the chassis connection. That, that's like the connection from the metal here, yeah? And that's where the black goes to. So we know black's there, yeah? So let's just uh, get a bit of paper and let's draw what we've got. So we can remember what we have. Yeah, there you go, yeah? So I've drawn, so you can see like the 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 stripes here, the solder stripes, that's those, yeah? So either side of this are connected together. And this is where the black wire goes. We can just check again, but that should be on all of those pins. So that, that, that'll be easy enough to solder. No black wire. 
Uh, yeah, these are connecting together. In fact, it goes to this pad in the middle as well, yeah. All that is the black wire. Where's the white one go? Not the end. Not that one. I've obviously not got a connection in the uh, thing. Because it, because it's faulty, I can't even get a connection to see where it goes. Okay, just to make things a bit more difficult. Where's, where's the blue one go? See if that will actually give us. Right, by pushing it that way, I can find where the blue one goes. It goes to here, and those two pins are actually connecting together. These two pins you see here. Let's do another maximum zoom on the camera. Now we can zoom in a bit more than that. <coughs> so I think if you can see, there's two pins here that are both connected together, and they go to the blue. I have to like effectively flex this a little bit first to get a connection. Yeah. This also confirms what the customer say about you can get it to work. So these two are connected together, and this is the blue. Yeah. So that one leaves the white. Uh, or do the two connected together? If 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 the other two here are connecting together, yeah, then well, they're both connected to the white, aren't they? Let's set this up so you can see it. I'm sure you can. Yeah. So the white goes to one or the other or both of these two, depends on if they're actually connecting together or not. So. Let's actually see. Now the two, the two don't connect together, so the white goes to one of them. So I'll get the onto the white. You can't see it, but I'm on the white wire here. Yeah? Let's waggle it round. No. Let's try this one. I had it then. I had it then. I'll try and. Uh, Take a crocodile clip. Uh, I'm going to cl clip a crocodile clip onto onto my uh, my chest meter, yeah. And then the other end, I'm going to clip onto the white wire. So I've got one hand free now to to waggle this connection while I, I probe it, yeah. So it's looking like it's just third one in. Add something there. Okay, so the white one goes there, but not to the end, yeah, because the end is reading the resistance from there. Okay, so that's where we need to solder the wires. Now then, uh, we need to take this off. I think we need to get this off the, the connector. Uh, so let's try it with. Uh, a bit of braid and flux first. Uh, I'll switch on the vacuum desoldering tool because that might help with this. A bit of water for the uh, soldering iron sponge. Well, let's see what we can uh, do with this. So, is that in focus? I'll just try and improve it. Yeah, that was good. So, I did solder either end of here. These two pins are connecting together, and these two are not. Let's see if the uh, solder braid will, will do this. Sorry, I was off the camera. Let's see if the solder braid will do this. I'll just put leaded solder on the pins, yeah. Bit of braid, it's a clean end on it. I mean, we could do it with hot air. Let's see if this will do it though. Yeah, that looks like it's some soldered. That 
also looks like it's unsoldered. Um, try for the, these two that are connecting together. Yeah, those look like they've unsoldered. Pretty well, anyway. And these two. Yeah, it's pretty good. Let's see if we can actually uh, persuade it. No, it's not going to come. There's something sticking it here as well. Uh, there. I'm not sure if that has got a, a tab, like a, a pad there or not. It's hard to see. Yeah. Have a go. Fucks. Okay. Let's see if we can persuade this to come off or not. That up. I'll push this under here. Um, I think I'm gonna have to use hot air to get this to free. Yeah, I've got this wedged in here and get a bit of pressure. So let's get some hot air on this now and see if this will just come out. 450 degrees for airflow. Let's see if it will come off. Yeah, there we go. There we go. That, that was fairly easily persuaded to come off there. Came off quite cleanly, yeah. Looks pretty good. Yeah, the PCB is double sided, but that looks good. Oh, that, that's handy. I've actually got, uh, I've got places where I can actually solder the wires here, yeah. There's pads on this side as well. We can see now the two that are connected together, and then this one with the thick track is the other one. Yeah, so I might well scrape away this thick track, solder one wire on here. Uh, the ground can go on one of these, and then can I tag this one on somewhere else? It's a little bit tight down now. Let's, let's have a look if there's uh, somewhere a bit more convenient to actually solder the, the, the wire. Yeah, the, the last wire. I mean, we can solder there, it's not a problem, but if there's somewhere else I can get to, it uh, would be nice. So from these here, yeah, it goes somewhere useful. No, I think we have to solder to that. Solder to that, solder to this one. Still quite hot there, just <laughs> being in the hot air, that's quite warm. I wonder if this one here, oh yeah. I wonder if this one here it goes to, there's a capacitor here, yeah, a big capacitor. Let's see if it actually goes to the, find the leg of it. Where's the capacitor? Oh, it's, it's behind here, it's, it's no easier to get at. It's going to be no easier to solder to that. Oh, it's, it's here actually. Yeah, I thought it might go to one of them, but it doesn't. Okay, not a worries. So let's uh, let's solder our wires. Uh, this gonna be, this one's going to be only be the only tricky one to soldering on here. I think I might put like a, a stiff wire pin into there and solder it to the pin. Yeah, put some heat shrink on it. The other ones are not going to be too much of a problem. Where's my little scraper? Right, that'll do.
so this is the pin that was on its own yeah which is the white one this is the white uh, this is the black and then the blue goes to these two together yeah so let's do the blue first that's gonna be the more tricky one to do yeah now let me find something stiff bit like a little yeah let's find the leg of, leg of a resistor that'll do this work nicely I think yeah I think I'll use uh, the, the, the leg off a resistor so if I can get this in here and I can kind of like bend it into like a U shape I should be able to get through both these holes yeah forming like a U and I can solder the wire to that then get some heat shrink over it to stop it shorting this one's not going to be a problem and this is not going to be a problem yeah nothing to short again so let's see if we can uh, clear this out I'm going to do it the easy way if I can it's an easy way it's never quite so easy is it let's uh, make sure this is not uh, blocked up right it was a little bit clogged it's a little bit clogged up but it's not now yeah. so we need a bit of fresh solder on the on the thing and then we can try and uh, desolder it Uh, hmm. Yeah, that seems to come off nice and clean. Very useful tool, this. Very useful tool. This should be on your shopping list. Yeah, if, if you're a bit, you know, if you're a bit short of money. Uh, once you've uh, done some repairs and sold some stuff or you've uh, managed to get some paid repair jobs uh, you know put this on your list you, they, they're about 60 pounds they're about UK okay so we'll make like a, a U shape out of this uh, resistor leg we don't need the resistor just the leg uh, and we'll uh, stick it through the the hole that we just desoldered. Okay, that's made like a see sticking up bit there. Yeah, uh, we can solder this in now on the other side. Just uh, bend the uh, ends slightly apart so it doesn't fall out. There we go. Solder that into place. It doesn't fell out, has it? No, it's still there. It's just moved a little bit. Yeah, it just moved a little bit. So now, now we can get. Okay, you see that's soldered quite nicely. Good blob of solder on it. Not short into anything here. Yeah cut off the spare bits okay. okay so we've now got a, a loop of wire here now yeah so we can use that to attach uh, the wire there uh, which was the blue wire the white wire onto here because this is connecting to there as you can see connects to there yeah so we can tag it on here and then the black wire can go on here in fact, it might even no. I'll stick it on here. It's probably the easiest place to get. So, let's get our uh, cable, our laptop cable. Before we do this, we need to remember uh, to put the wire through the, through the hole. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to put a like a, a knot in it or something. Uh, but what I will do, I'll try and use some uh, hot melt. And, 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 and I need to allow it to push outwards, yeah, when I slide the thing in. And I think I'll just fill this with Aroldite or hot melt glue or something like that. Okay. Make sure I didn't actually cut into, into these with a Stanley knife. 
No, it's looking good. It's looking good. Okay. It's going to be difficult to get uh, on the sort of loop here. I was hoping to get some uh, heat shrink. Uh, I, might, I might be able to do it, but I, so I don't want to make these any longer than they are. I, I might be able to do it. Let, let me find some heat shrink and we'll see if it's possible to do this. Yeah, I think if I use a, a fairly thick bit of heat shrink, so you can see the uh, the loop there. Yeah, this, this will fit quite nicely on that and grip. You know, it, it will shrink to fit onto that. But the problem is, I put it on the blue wire. I don't have much to work with, yeah. Um, I could try actually slide it all the way back over here so it doesn't shrink while we're soldering this and then slide it forwards and kind of like pull the black and the white wire back through, yeah. Uh, but let's, let's just uh, let's just try first with it on the blue wire, see if I can solder this without getting the heat shrink uh, so hot that it melts, yeah. So let's try it. If if it doesn't work, we'll go to we'll go to plan B. Okay, so there's the blue wire. Bit of solder on that. A bit of solder on the little loop. But I think this will work, because I think I can probably get away with using a, a, a narrower bit of uh, heat shrink. Let me see what I have in my my tub of tub of stuff. Yeah. A bit of green. It's only a short length, but uh, it's long enough. It's a bit small. Yeah, let's try that. Okay, try that. A bit of solder on the uh, wire, and then a bit of solder on the, the little loop. Uh, I think somewhere's on it. Put the uh, the bit of heat shrink back on. Yeah. Let's see if we can tag this onto here. Bit of flux, why not? Always helps. Okay. Wire presented to the loop. In fact, I might even be able to uh, gooey stuff. I wonder if I can actually bend this so it actually fits uh, over that loop. I'll actually just uh, make like a little hook, yeah. Yeah, it's hooked underneath it. And sold it. Yeah, that's looking good guys, so uh, heat shrink hopefully will fit over that, yeah, there it goes. That's fitting nicely on there. We can put a bit of uh, warmth in off the hot air. Uh, only took a second, only took a moment. It only takes a minute. That's uh, gripped quite nicely. Uh. So now it's black wire and white wire. Black one can come down here. I want to keep it quite short and the white can go up the other side, yeah. To the scraped off pad. Uh we'll do white next because it's it that's the it's gonna be easier to get at now. So we'll keep this one short. We'll tag this onto the little pad. I want to keep this quite short so that the uh, the sleeve of this wire sort of stays inside, yeah? When I fix this all in with glue. So that goes there. A little bit of flux. Okay. 
bit on the uh, bit of solder on the the track. Yeah, that's got some solder on it. So the white one can go to here. Just clean the end of the iron, so nasty bother solder on it. Okay. That's soldered. Yep, yeah, that's soldered. And then the last one's the black, uh, which comes down to this oval looking pad here, yeah. So we need to again to just uh, cut it to the right sort of length. Just uh, take the bit of insulation off the end. Yes, strip a bit of that off. Again. Soldered to there. Uh, where's my uh, needle nose pliers? Uh huh. Just uh, bend this into position. Oh, there we go. Uh, take it down. Yeah, that's looking good. Heat it and it should just attach. There we go. Bit wool. Uh, got my fingernail on it to hold this in place. Okay, so that's soldered. So that's on there. White's on here. Blue's on there. Um. So yeah, we can uh, we we can give this a try. I think. Let's. Um, yeah, let's give it a try. You've probably just noticed that the, uh, the green uh, heat streak is now blue because I actually rather embarrassingly did what I said not to do and I forgot to put the wire through the one there, yeah. So I had to unsolder it and resolder it again. Uh, too embarrassing to make you watch it again, but not not that embarrassed. I won't tell you what I did. And anyway, I couldn't find any more green heat streak. <laughs> so I couldn't get away with it, yeah. Oh, uh, well. So, yeah. We've got it all uh, together. I think we'll uh, we'll try and test this. I'm not rightly sure where this little rubber things come from. It's like a heat shrink compoundy stuff. That's oh, I think I know. I think this came off the back of this, you know. Yeah, it's, it fits. It fits on there, so I'm guessing that came off the back of there. It certainly fits. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we have uh, the little uh, thing. Which way round does it go? This, oh, this is where there's like a little stiff bit of wire that came through. Yeah, this way round. So this, yeah, that fits on there. That's a stiff bit. Of, sorry, that's a stiff bit of wire there. Yeah. That was soldered, so that goes round that way. Okay, I'm going to zoom out because I'm too close for this sort of work. One moment. Okay, so that goes on there. Um, this piece fits here, uh, and this is where this little peg was soldered in here. And I can actually feel it still in place, so I should be able to get a little bit of uh, a little bit of solder on that. Yeah, I can. Uh, a bit of focus in it. Oh, I've switched my soldier. I'd switched this off actually. I've forgotten that I needed it again. Good thing with the T12, it doesn't take very long to warm up, that's for sure. Uh, sit in there. Solder. I need one moment now. Bleep. There you go. Up to temperature. Yeah. So we can attach this back into this little pin. I'm, I'm really not sure what that does, but. It's back on, yeah. Just give it a second while the solder solidifies. Okay. So that's on there. Um, there's a top piece here. 
uh, which rattles across here so there's just these little bendy metal tabs basically that hold this in place so it must go it goes this way because it can't possibly go any other way yeah so that sits on there we can fold these things back I'm guessing that's something to do with shielding for interference but as to what it's connected to in here I don't know anyway that's all I don't know what it's connected to and I don't need to know put this back on this back on here try it the other way around so it sits in place there we go so we can slide the cover uh, back onto this it's a tight fit but it should just go in yeah there we go and it should push yeah it's in yeah so basically where we've cut this open here we basically need to uh, effectively fill it fill this with aldite yeah fill this gap all the way around here with aldite uh, aldite epoxy resin yeah all the way around so i can i can kind of like scrape away this rough uh you know where i was melting into it to open it up uh, just smooth all that down and then you effectively fill this fill this whole gap with that old eyes all the way around and it'll look pretty neat actually uh, when it's done it'll, it'll look uh, pretty good okay but it's uh, good if i put a bit of tape around this now we can test it yeah uh, obviously we're not going to leave that like that when the customer has it we're going to glue it but um we can test it i can as i mentioned that all this uh all this like rough uh plastic can come off here yeah like, like i'm doing now yeah so all, all this rough uh, plastic can come off there we go so one, once it's once it's glued it'll look quite uh, quite tidy but it's really it's only a temporary job anyway until they can get a new one this is just to get them up and running yeah We're all smoothing all that off. Some blob can go here. A bit from here. That's that's a lot better now. That's a lot better now. Okay. We're in. We're in place. Okay. Yeah, so that that's considerably uh, neater than it was. So it's not that quite done, but it's, it's getting there. Okay. Okay, let's find a bit of tape and just hold this in place, and then we can test it. Okay, so I'm not going to give it back to the customer like this. Uh, I need to get some aldite uh, and seal it all in properly, but I can test it at least. Um, so let's make sure that it's actually working now. Yes, I'll plug it in, switch it on, nothing goes pop, that's good, isn't it? Uh, so this is the Lenovo laptop, um, which has no charge, the battery's flat on it, yeah. Um, let me show you switch this on actually must have an on switch somewhere oh it's on the side looks like the on off switch is somewhere on the side of it yeah there there so yeah it's not not actually running at the moment so let's plug the uh, power supply in and let's see if the charger will come on where does it give it here it goes in one of these connections yeah this one at this end this way up Okay, so the charger's on it now. Let's see if it'll power up. Is this the on-off switch? No, it's not running. Interesting.
Okay, so uh, quite obviously it's not working. Um, no power on the laptop. Um, so I've opened it back up again. Um, just uh, checking first uh, across the main capacitor. Yeah, there's 17 volts across that. So obviously there was charge getting into this, but the fact there's still quite a bit of voltage across that main capacitor suggests to me it's discharging very slowly. Uh, this is why these can be dangerous by the way because this would have probably charged up to like 300 volts here yeah, and held the charge and you can see even with my meter it's just discharging slowly uh, but it's safe now um, let's have a look see I'm just checking for shorts on the average I never thought to check the power supply because the customer said, you know, I believe the customer, yeah, the customer told me that if you wag with it, it worked. There's no shorts there. The blue one is on the uh, the two pins here. And that's not short to there. And it's not short to here, okay. Let's zoom in on it. Let's have a zoom. So this is what you get when you believe what the customer tells you. Um, but there's no shorts on the output. Um, let's have a look to see now if this cable's any good, yeah. Because uh, I didn't test this. I mean, obviously, quite clearly, the other end was a very, was a very bad connection. Um, if we go to voltage, yeah, we're on continuity mode. So let's have a look from the uh, the black wire first. This is ground, yeah. Let's just make sure actually this is a good ground as well. So this is ground. This is the black wire. I don't have a, I'm not sure I have a good ground here. Ah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course, because I've removed the the connector, yeah, and the connector was connecting this pin to this pin, and to the back here. I wonder if I've actually just broke the ground circuit. If you see what I mean, so effectively, the metal frame of this is a circuit for, from. Uh, one side to the other which is effectively these two holes down here these oval ones and i wonder and the reason saying because i measured ground here here and everywhere and now from the end of here to here i don't have anything yeah i don't seem to have anything now and actually the middle went to here somewhere I think it's possible I've actually effectively disconnected the, the ground circuit by doing this by assuming these points here are all connected together and they're not meters working okay so that's, that's uh, possibly a problem well that should come from the negative end of this capacitor I'm, I'm assuming this is on the output I'm, I'm expecting this to be ground yeah the negative end of this one so let's see if we can find the the capacitor here somewhere negative the capacitor here yeah now that goes to the middle there yeah that goes to the middle but it doesn't go to here and it doesn't go to here so that's ground there yeah negative the capacitor so that must be the ground so where I've soldered the wire, the black wire is not connecting to ground, so that's a good reason why it would be dead. And probably why it was discharging slowly, because it powered up, but there was no load, yeah? So what we need to do for now, I think, is connect a wire right across here, there, to there, to there. Just in case, just in case for some reason this needs to be grounded as well, yeah? So let's find uh, a bit of wire. What do I do with that resistor? Let me have a look. Yeah, quite clearly I put it in the bin, yeah. Uh, so, here's, here's another one. So, I'm going to solder this from here 
right across the middle to there and connect all these three points together as ground because that's how they would have been when the the other connector was in place I'm pretty sure by the looks of it yeah looks that way okay let's solder Certainly these two outer bits were connected together because that was part of the where the where the casing of the you know the metal outer part of the USB ish connector was, yeah. Tag that on there. I've tagged it on at both ends. And now I'm gonna get a bit of solder into the middle of it. A bit of flux will probably help. That looks uh, good. Looks pretty good. Okay. Let's see if we've got uh, a ground now. So ground. Yeah, we've got a ground now. And where's the negative end of that big capacitor here? Yeah, we got a ground. So this end of this capacitor would go, you assume, to the white wire, which I probably can't get to from this side. Uh, see if I can actually get on it or not. Yeah, so that's sort of end of the capacitor there. So I've got those connections now. We need to make sure this is any good. So let's see if we can find a connection into here from each of the wires yeah so let's go with the uh, the white first so that's on I'm on white thought I had it straight away needs three hands for this guys I haven't got I haven't got three hands but I have got one of one one of these yeah one of these things so this will help so what I've done is I've gripped the grip this in here to keep it still yeah so I can actually get a meter probe on that one let's just zoom out this a little bit for you guys that should do the job uh, so yeah we're under white wire I'll do it with the left hand uh, let's get it on left handed but I'm on the white wire, see if I've got a connection in here. Yeah, I have. I've, I've, so the white wire have a connection, yeah? Black wire. It's got the black wire. Connection, okay. Well, actually, goes to the metal frame, which you kind of expect. I'm happy with that. It goes to the metal frame. That's good enough. And then the blue wire uh, from underneath it. Blue wire. It's here. Okay. It's not connected. To it. Yeah, it's here. It's there. So I have connection on the cables, the cable's good. Uh, doesn't say whether this ends any good at making a connection to the laptop, but at least all the connections are there now. Um, so that lack of ground is a good good enough reason for nothing to have happened. Um, let's try it again. I'm trying to think of anywhere I can test this on the bench, uh, short of making like a little extension lead, which I don't have. Uh, that's not gonna be easy. Um, so I think f no, let's, let's plug it back in I mean we found a good enough reason for it not to have worked yeah so let's have a look okay guys so I've put it all back together uh, you can see the Lenovo here now um, 
let's connect the uh, power supply again and see if it works this time so that's in there fingers crossed eh? powers on and see if it actually powers up now did I hear anything yay you can't see it can you you'll see it now there you go one laptop fix guys see you on the next video cheers now so it's working that almost fooled me though <laughs> so yeah without this in you haven't got a, an earth path between where these three pins go you'd think on the PCB that all those three pads would be uh, connected together and it didn't matter where I put the earth but obviously the metal frame of this is, is part of the earth circuit basically say earth I mean I mean there's naught volts yeah power supply negative okay so just a matter now of, uh, of you know tidying this up and gluing it back together uh, by far the best stuff for this is Aldite. Well, I'll say Aldite. This is super tight. Uh, I couldn't. I don't seem to find the Aldite brand here. Uh, if I if I had, I, I would use it. It's, it's good. Uh, but depending on where you are in the world, I guess you you'll have your own uh, various brands. Of this one euro ninety eight wasn't expensive. And I, I think I've used this type before. It seems to be seems to work get it from these we get them from these Chinese shops we have here uh, we got a lot of these Chinese shops they kind of like home shops they sell everything for tools car parts you know windscreen wipers and stuff uh, and they sell a lot of stuff that doesn't work so you get like uh, like zip ties to snap when you put them on or you get uh, insulation tape that isn't sticky yeah that's, that was a good one insulation tape that isn't sticky uh, right it comes with a little plastic uh, tub thing let me just uh, get a bit of kitchen roll because I'm bound to make some mess with this yeah C comes with like a little uh, plastic tray and like a little uh, a little tool yeah for, for putting it on with <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how useful it's going to be like, but it came with it. Um, I'm not sure that's going to be big enough to stir the stuff up anyway. Uh, okay, so yeah, that was a nice idea, but it's not going to work, I don't think. Well, we could accommodate this, I think. Here's a bit of this. No, it's actually uh, sealed. So let's see if we've got epoxy resin that doesn't set to go with the uh, insulation tape that isn't sticky yeah oh and the hammer that the end head comes off the first time you use it that's another good one yeah that stuff works don't you guys 50 50 mix of it and we'll spread it in there and I'll let it set overnight customer can have this back tomorrow because I know they definitely need it yeah this might take two like, kind of applications of it, so I might like mix them up, let it set in, and then a bit like you know when you put your filler on the wall. If you ever done any you know home DIY, you build it up in a few layers. Yeah, uh, let's have this little thing. Yeah, stir it up, stir it up. I'm sure, that's a song or something. Whip it up, whip it, whip it, good. God, who was that bloody song by? Devo, Devo, whip it. That's the one. If you're not familiar with that, you should go and have a listen. Great bit of eighties music. Yeah. And then we can kind of like start to fill in the gap, yeah. If I put this on all the way around, and I'll I'll put uh, some uh, of that uh, masking tape I had, just to hold this plastic bit down. I can, I'm sure I can get the tape off afterwards. I'll find some way once it's all set. Uh, it doesn't matter if the tape stays on a little bit. So this is a matter of basically filling in this big uh, 
furrow that we we made in it that we ploughed in it. Yeah. And it should come out pretty good. We can uh, sand it down a little bit afterwards just to make a really tidy job of it. The stuff off there. That seems to be enough of that. Yeah, so what I'll do is now with this, uh, I'll take a bit more of that masking tape. Yeah. And I'll kind of like just hold it in place while it sets. I can soon sand this off basically, you know, when, when it's obviously it will have stuck. So that should have the tool back. Yeah, let's have that back. It doesn't need air for this to set. You know, it's not like it needs, you know, it, it won't, you think it won't set because I've covered it up so no air. It's a chemical, chemical reaction between the two. Uh, you know, like the, the 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 resin and the the, the whatever it is to cause it to harden. Yeah. Just clean a bit of this crap off here now. There we go. Okay, guys. So uh, that's the end of that. You've seen it done. Oh, we forgot one thing, didn't we? We need to uh, set this in as well. Yeah, where the wire goes in. So we'll need a little bit more. A little bit more. Yeah. It's fairly rapid setting, I think. Well, I'm not sure if this is. I mean, some of it is. So we're just going to effectively fill in the hole. By the cable. Okay, fill that in. Uh, a bit of this. On there. And then we can kind of like tip it upside down, yeah? So that stuff has kind of went inside or kind of should like run back out onto this tape. Again, what the tape that's stuck to it, I can use a bit of cleaning stuff, water or something to get this off. Okay, so there we have it. Um, slightly messy, but... Uh, that was an emergency repair for this lady. At least she has her laptop working. And that can keep her going in, until uh, she buys uh, a replacement supply. I I'll advise her not to keep on using this one. I mean, I'm sure it, it doesn't meet some safety regulations. Uh, so I will certainly advise her that she does need to replace it. Uh, but for now, she, she, she can uh, use it yeah, to keep herself running. Okay, guys, that's the end of that one. Uh, I will see you soon on the next one. Bye now.